Hello, I'm Tom Sexton, um, and I work for Siemens as a MindSphere Applications Engineer. Uh, MindSphere, for anyone who doesn't know, is the Siemens um, Industrial Internet of Things platform. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you about Industry 4.0 and challenges for um, the Industrial Internet of Things. So, a bit of an introduction on what is Industry 4.0 to start with, because uh, to some people it may just sound like a bit of a buzzword. Um, it refers to the fourth industrial revolution that we've been through. Um, and there's a nice timeline on the um, slide up there which shows the four revolutions that we have been through. Uh, the first one, uh, or, which was uh, the development of mechanical systems powered by water and steam. Um, maybe a hundred years gap then before the second one was uh, taken into effect and um, electricity was utilised. Um, and by electrifying the mechanical systems, it allowed for mass production of uh, products. Um, and then another time gap of maybe 100 years before the third industrial revolution, and automation really started to kick off because of the um, uh, development and advancing of electronics and IT <coughs> systems. Um, and now we find ourselves now transitioning into the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, which concerns digitalization and the use of data in clever ways to produce insights into industry. Um, some key components of Industry 4.0 include digital solutions such as Digital Twin, um, AR and VR, additive manufacturing, um, and IoT, which I'll go into more detail on. <coughs> uh, so this slide is summarizing why IoT, or uh, industrial IoT, um, how, how it can be used to provide value to industry. Um, and the slide says MindSphere, but it's applicable to all uh, IoT platforms. Um, so if you look in the um, bottom left where it says data, um, it, um, this is part of the real world. Uh, so the slide has the real world and the virtual world. Um, and in the real world, the industry has a wealth of data which has been collected from a variety of machines um, and this can be any of the different industries um, <clears throat> and the IoT platform allows for that interface between the real world and the virtual world um, which translates to the data being uploaded to the cloud um, and once the data is in the cloud it can be run on by cloud applications to perform analytics and produce insights which are relevant to that industry um, and these insights can be then fed back into the real world as actionable results to increase the uptime of machinery, um, efficiency, or some other relevant business <coughs> KPI. Um, so IoT is all about creating this feedback loop where insights can be produced from the data. Um, so I'll just talk about some of the challenges for adopting IoT. Um, the first challenge relates to the previous slide, which is when industry has that wealth of data but isn't sure how to unlock the value within it. Um, and how can we overcome this uh, problem? Uh, so the way I see it is there's two key areas of expertise that's needed. Um, you need the expertise on the IoT system itself and the expertise on the um, industry as well. Uh, so Siemens has addressed this problem by targeting MindSphere at industries where Siemens is already well established. So Siemens has expertise within wind power, power and gas, mobility, uh, building technologies. And because of this, it allows Siemens to, um, to understand the problems of those industries and the challenges that they are facing. Uh, so in order to frame MindSphere uh, in a way where it allows that value to be unlocked. Um, Another way to address the problem of industries um, struggling to unlock that value of their data is the ability to produce applications within cloud platforms which can then be transferred within the same industry. So if a solution with analytics was made for a wind turbine which increased its efficiency, that could then be rolled out to every wind turbine in, in theory. And the beauty of a cloud platform like this is that those applications could be marketed and sold so it, um, it incentivizes more developers to come and make those apps that add value. 
Um, another challenge for IoT, um, and in particular industrial IoT, is the cybersecurity aspect, which has already been mentioned a bit, um, and is obviously a key consideration. Um, to address this, it's important to have um, an industrial Internet of Things platform which has security built in, um, in the, both the IT and the OT layer, um, and often industries will be very cautious about connecting their uh, systems up to the internet unless um, critical um, cyber security uh, measures have been taken and often require certain standards to be met before they'll even consider it. Um, and a final challenge that I'll mention for the adoption of I IoT is um, a, skill, a skills gap that is uh, developing in the um, in the realm of uh, digital skills. Um, so there just aren't enough people with the digital skills required to um, address the demand for IoT and all of the other digital um, digital ventures in of Industry 4.0. Uh, and that's summarised quite nicely in this slide here. Um, <coughs> So this slide here details some of the technologies and skills required for a full IoT um, project or development. Um, and it shows um, some of the communications protocols and the connectivity side of things, um, the software architecture and um, programming languages required for developing applications, um, along with data science and machine learning techniques. Uh, the security protocols are there, um, as well as some business skills as well. Um, and this is just a handful of the many, many skills and disciplines that are required um, for a fully-fledged IoT solution. Um, and it says it very well at the top, no one person has the depth that you need. And it just summarises the need for collaboration um, between different parties. Um, and on the note of collaboration, um, Siemens has set up um, three Mindsphere Innovation Network locations. Um, one of which is the Mindsphere Lounge upstairs, um, and these mine locations, um, which is the acronym, um, are set up in Sheffield, uh, one in Newcastle and one in Lincoln, and they are designed to be hubs for co-creation and collaboration between Siemens and university researchers who um, are experts in their areas. Um, and it, works as a central hub where industry can come in and have those discussions about <coughs> where value can be unlocked and the skills that are required and what innovative solutions can be produced. Um, so I now was going to quick show you a quick video on the Sir William, uh, Sir William Siemens Challenge, which um, was a hackathon event uh, supported by Siemens held here in the Diamond Building. Um, which allowed students to get hands-on with some of the building <coughs> of the Dam Building's data. Here at the Diamond Building at the University of Sheffield to hold our first annual Swimming Seamless Challenge named Mindsphere Live. really is about bringing multidisciplinary engineering teams together to collaborate and work to achieve a, a common goal that incorporates data and then to create models, bits of kit that will bring that data to life. <coughs> we sort of feel is to actually make a device from scratch and uh, try and mix art and engineering together. The University of Bayer makes a small theory, but here you're going to apply things and share ideas or learn from each other. We didn't know each other before. And in the Mac community, everyone just sort of been really trying to like, we didn't know how to put this at the most experiments, whether or not to come from other teams and help us out. But the real benefit for students attending this type of event is that engineering is a real practical subject. So from my point of view, it's not about sitting out in front of people learning from a computer. It's really hands-on. It's about the interaction, working in teams, solve new problems and I think it was a lot out of this event. Being a mentor here today, uh, it's been great because we've been able to help students with their data and how we can take the data from the diamond building and 
using machine learning background to predict how we can save on CO2, how we can save on power and electricity. Just the fact that we were able to see a project through from um, the beginning to the end and to, to make something that we're all really interested in. It's <coughs> a really good accomplishment and of course it looks like my CV as well. I think I've learned how to work uh, in team with people I've never met before. And very different strengths and weaknesses. We learned a lot of stuff in like 48 hours that you would, you know, from weeks ago. You know, like, Seeing as learning this is fantastic, and I would definitely recommend this to other people even thinking about it because it gets you involved, it gets you networking, and it just gets you more experience. Our device basically is the part of the diamond, so we wanted a way to bring this building to life because it's meant to be the um, part of engineering Sheffield. It is a real life problem that we're trying to, to give them, it's something that they may face in a business environment. So. Hopefully, all of that will give them an insight into what potentially a life of scenes could be like as well. We really want to develop the next generation of engineers to really create things and develop things going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Designed to uh, give students that hands-on experience with that real-life data and um, develop their digital skills for the future. Um, and finally, I was just going to talk about um, an example. Um, it's a good example because it's the one upstairs in the Mindsville Lounge, and it's the Festo Cyber Physical Lab. So this is a real um, industrial manufacturing plant, um, which has a it produces mobile phone cases and it has a little robot that goes between the two cells uh, to transport it around and this has been hooked up to Mindsphere um, and also a digital twin has been created using Siemens PLM software uh, you can see the digital twin simulation running down there alongside the real video um, and it will be used within the curriculum so students can get their hands on real digital uh, industrial challenges um, and develop those skills for the future um, thank you um, and if you have any questions, I will welcome. <coughs>